we're doing things a little differently. That's right, Caroline. Today we're going to be talking about some Thanksgiving and Christmas ideas that are quite unknown to other people. You know, that is weird how most ideas of Christmas are unanswered. Yeah, you would think that the idea of the Mayflower would be quite easy to understand, but shockingly, it isn't to other people. Let's start off our cast with some Thanksgiving. Here's Sophie with the first Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a holiday that is celebrated all over the United States. But what do we really celebrate? In 1621, English colonists called the Pilgrims came to Plymouth on the Mayflower. The Native Americans there were part of the Wampanoag tribe. The Pilgrims were separatists, people who wanted religious freedom. They traveled there to try and start their own colony where they could worship freely, because at that time, many people didn't agree with their beliefs. The Wampanoag people hoped that by making an alliance with the Pilgrims, they would be able to keep their land. The colonists gave the tribe protection from other colonists who tried to keep them off their land. Many people believed that the alliance was peaceful, but the Native Americans were scared and didn't agree for a while, which angered the colonists and even caused some of them to rebel. The Squanto was a person who was commonly talked about around this time of year. He helped the colonists and Native Americans communicate with each other because he knew both languages. He also taught the pilgrims how to plant maize and catch fish. Many people don't know this, but he learned English while he was in slavery. He escaped Spain and came back to America after 14 years. The tribe saved the pilgrims from starvation. William Bradford, the governor, thanked them by including the tribe at a feast. The, this may be surprising, but the feast lasted three days. Although the food, parades, and other celebration traditions are fun, many people lose sight of what really happened. We only think about turkey and other foods that are enjoyed this time of year. Many people don't realize, realize the real reason we celebrate Thanksgiving. It's because we have so much to be thankful for. Back to you, Caroline and Jacob. Well, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was, but you know what would be more interesting? Let me guess, something to do with Christmas. Yes, a guy farther in the Christmas balloon. Oh, the big man Santa. Yep, let's see what Izzy and, and Sarah have to say about the history of Santa Claus. Go. Why don't we talk about the history behind Santa Claus because Christmas is right around the corner. That's a great idea. It all started by a guy named St. Nicholas who was born in AD 280 in Padua, Turkey. Did you know that he was also a monk and a 4th century Catholic saint? I never knew that. St. Nicholas was a nice man. For instance, he saved people from going into slavery and helped the sick and injured. He is also known as Father Christmas who plays an important character in many European countries. Although, things have changed throughout history. Currently, he is thought to be a man with a white beard wearing a red suit that also had a black belt. That's right, Izzy, but don't forget the red hat and the black boots. Legend says he lives in the North Pole making toys with the help of his elves. It is tradition that kids leave out cookies and milk for him to eat and drink on Christmas Eve. We don't only get gifts on Christmas or Christmas Eve, but those who celebrate his feast day, December 6th, receive gifts because it is the day that St. Nicholas died. We also celebrate all the generous ways St. Nicholas has helped people this day. The Santa tradition was celebrated throughout the entire world, and it still is today. And this is one of the reasons why more than 78% of the world has Christmas as their favorite holiday. Back to you, Caroline and Jacob. Well, Jacob, I definitely learned something new. Me too. St. Nicholas was a monk? Crazy. You know what I think would be cool to talk about? Oh, no. Not again. Christmas around the world. Do you mean like Christmas in different cultures? Exactly right. Let's see what Christmas offers worldwide. Today we are going to tell you how Christmas is celebrated in some different parts of the world. Here in America, most citizens love giving gifts, decorating, and eating delicious foods. But what about other countries? How do they celebrate differently? Terry, please tell us more. In Greece, on Christmas Eve, kids sing carols in the streets, carrying boats, playing different instruments, and making delicious breads. Back to you, Lucas. I heard over in Brazil they do things a little different too, like launching fireworks and festival lights. Plays are also performed by men and women who dress up as shepherds and try to steal baby Jesus. Indeed, Lucas. Now let's talk about Angola. Yeah, I heard many people watch a Christmas service, and if they can't go to it, they'll watch it off of their home devices. Angolians also make many meals consisting of fish and many other dishes. In Finland, their Santa is called Jolopuki, also referred to as the Yoko. Finnish people also commonly give their animals a Christmas of their own. Many tourists come to Finland to visit a park called Christmas Land. That's all. Thank you for listening, and Merry Christmas. That was nice, but I'm tired of all this history talk. <clears throat> yeah, let's see what Aaliyah and Ellie have to say about the gifts. Wait, how did gifts become the center of giving? I don't know, but let's find out. 
Have you ever wondered when or how gift giving at Christmas started? You know, I haven't exactly thought about that before. Well, in that case, let me tell you how it started. It all started in 6 4 BC when the three wise men traveled to see the infant baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Yeah, now I remember. They gave him frankincense, gold, and myrrh. That's right. And from there, the focus of Christmas kept changing. Do you know when gift giving became a well known tradition? Good question. During the time of the Protestant Re Reformation, gift giving to children increased and became a very well known tradition. That was during the 19th century, right? Yes. The gift ideas definitely changed throughout the years. How have things changed? Many people today spend more money on gifts because they tend to buy more than one gift for the same person. Wait, I'm confused. What does gift giving symbolize for Christians? It symbolizes the gift that all Christians have received, Jesus. I learned a lot about gift giving. It's a really interesting tradition. Back to you, Carolina Diego. It's really cool how gift giving is centered around wise men and how they gave out gifts. Yeah, that's really cool. Maybe we can learn more about the Christmas celebration. Sounds good. Like it wasn't celebrated until the 1700s? Don't you just love Christmas? Yeah, there are so many things to do, like building snowmen, giving gifts, and hanging out with family. Yeah, but what was the celebration of Christmas like a really long time ago? Well, in the 1700s, very few people celebrated, and it was not about the fact that it was Jesus' birthday. Some people started to celebrate Christmas in the early 1800s, but most people still didn't. On June 26, 1870, Christmas became an official holiday in America to celebrate the birth of Jesus. This was around the time that Santa became a popular holiday figure. After Christmas became an official holiday, tons of more people started to celebrate it. Yeah, people started giving small gifts and putting up Christmas trees. People also started to invite their friends and family over to have dinner. In the early 1900s, only one in five Americans had Christmas trees in the house, but most people were still celebrating. By the mid-1900s, Christmas really started to become what it is today. People started setting up huge Christmas trees and putting tons of lights outside their houses. Wow, it's crazy to think that Christmas wasn't always celebrated how we do it today. Yeah, it really is. Back to you, Caroline and Wow, Caroline, it's crazy how Christmas has changed so much. That is pretty crazy, but during Christmas, you see that one red flower, right? Yeah, I think it's called the poinsettia. Oh. Have you ever thought about how it became the Christmas flower? No, but we're about to find out. Hey, Frankie. What's up? Did you know that the poinsettia is the official Christmas flower? But where did they come from? These amazing flowers were originally from Central America and Mexico, but the majority of flowers are produced in the U.S. from California. But what is the history of them, and why do we use them in the Jack Christmas hat? Back to you, Frankie. Well, the red represents the blood of Jesus, while speckled with white represents his purity. Well, I bet you didn't know that in Mexico, they have a folk tale called Peptita and the Flowers of the Holy Night. And the story goes like this. A girl named Peptita went to go visit baby Jesus, but she could only find weeds, so she took them. And in the, fla and in the presence of baby Jesus, they turned into beautiful poinsettias. Wow, I never knew that, but in history, what were they used for? Well, the Aztecs would use its milky sap for dyeing textiles and cosmetics and would use um, it as medicine for high fevers, but now we just call it sap latex. Wow, that was cool. Anyways, back to you, Caroline and Jacob. Well, how about that? The flower represents Jesus. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe the point that it was influenced by the Christmas tree. Probably. I wonder why there are two Christmas plants. Me too. Let's find out. Christmas is celebrated all over the world in different ways. Let's see how. Way right before the advent of Christianity, plants and trees that stay green all year have a special meaning to people. It's really cool how some trees stay green and how some change colors so fast. Just like today, people decorated their houses with festival trees like pine spears and fir trees. Lots of ancient people hung bows over their doors and windows. In many countries, people believe that these bows would keep away witches, ghosts, and evil spirits. Germany is credited with starting the Christmas tree. In the 16th century, sources recorded devout Christian, Christians bringing Christmas trees into their homes. In the 16th century, Martin Luther first added lights and candles to the Christmas tree. In 1820, German communities in Pennsylvania were the first to be seen with the Christmas trees in America. Wow, I thought we always had Christmas trees. Most 19th century Americans found Christmas trees to be strange. That's kind of weird. I thought we liked Christmas trees. Back to you, Jacob and Caroline. You know, something that connects to the Christmas tree are lights. That's right. Those lights are connected, literally. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder why there are lights on the Christmas tree. This time of year, many people like to start hanging the Christmas lights on their houses. But do you know the history behind it? Yes, Kelly. 
Christmas lights were invented in 1880 by Thomas Edison, and about 150 million lights are still in the U.S. every year. Yes, Nick, but did you know every color on Christmas lights have different meanings? No, Kelly. What are some of these meanings? Some of the meanings include red that symbolizes <clears throat> the blood that Christ shed on the cross for us, purple that symbolizes the awareness of violence, and green represents eternal life. That is very fascinating. Some countries use candles instead of Christmas lights. The usage of candles originated in Germany and in England. Many people around the world like to do these types of traditions. Yes, in Norway, people light candles in their houses from Christmas Eve to New Year's Day in a positive, cozy, and warm feel during the winter cold. As Christians, we use these special lights to symbolize that Jesus saved us from the darkness of sin. That's all we have about the fascinating story of Christmas lights. Back to you, Caroline Jacob. That's crazy. I didn't know each of the colors represent symbols. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Everyone likes candy canes, right? Of course they do. I wanted to learn more about why they're put on trees, too. Hey, Joey, do you like candy canes? Yes, I do. Well, do you know the Ruler's backstory to them? Actually, I do. Well, the cane is the staff that are carried by the shepherds. Oh, like how Jesus is not a shepherd and we are a sheep? Yes, Joey, you're right. The color red means the love that God has for us. Like how he gave his own son, Jesus, for our sins to die on the cross for them. Aren't the stripes just as important as red? Yes, they help us remember Jesus suffering by wearing his crown of thorns. And the wounds on his hands and feet. It also resembles the cross he died on. That explains why we put him on the Christmas tree. The candy canes resemble that. It's amazing how candy can have such a huge backstory. I agree, Terry. It is amazing. Back to you, Carolyn and Jacob. Well, now I know the whole thing about candy canes. Me too, but we haven't mentioned Thanksgiving in a while. Yeah, I've been interested in the first Thanksgiving lately. Like the Mayflower journey? Exactly. Thanks, Caroline and Jacob. Hey, Gabe, what do you think about the first Thanksgiving? What do you think of? I think of the Pilgrim from the Mayflower. The Mayflower was the ship that brought the Pilgrims to America, right? Yeah, do you know there were 103 people on the ship? Really? How many people survived? Unfortunately, only 50. Why did the Pilgrims go over to America in the first place? They wanted religious freedom from King, King Henry VIII. How long did the journey last? 66 days, which is over two months. How big was the ship? If it held 102 people, it must have been huge. No, actually, it was 100 feet long. What? That's about the size of three school buses. Yes, imagine half the school and just three school buses for 66 days. Oh wow, it's crazy how just 50 people could bring so much disease. What do you mean? The Pilgrims brought over so many diseases from England that it killed many of the Native Americans that have been living there for centuries. Is the disease what killed so many of the people on the Mayflower? Yes, there was one person who got swept, swept overboard when the winds were very rough, and a woman who gave birth to a son named Oceanus. I remember hearing about a document sent on the ship. Yes, its name is the Mayflower Compact. Why is it important? Because it was having everybody agree to work for the good of the new colony. 41 people signed it when they arrived. The colony they set up is in Plymouth, Massachusetts. They were originally trying to land in New York, but missed the Hudson River by just a few degrees. When did they land? November 11, 1620. Any other facts about where they landed? The Pilgrims made a place right by the settlement called Burial Hill, where they buried all the bodies from when they landed, and any man that wasn't with the family had to pick the family to live with. Well, that's all we have here. Back to you guys. Something people rave about all around Christmas time is Boar's Head. Oh yeah, I'm sure people talk about that year after year. Me too. It's about a pig's head or something, right? I don't think so. Let's see what Aiden and Gianna have to tell us about the meaning behind this Boar's Head. Hello everyone. Today Gianna and I are going to be talking about the Boar's Head Festival and how it started here at school and around the world. Yes, that's right Aiden. The Boar's Head Festival is a very interesting topic that we'll be talking about. The festival started here in 2007, and the elders of the church were the founders to start it here. Wow, that's very interesting, Aiden. That was a long time ago. Did you know that 200 to 250 people are in, in the program, in acting, the lights, behind the scenes, a whole bunch of stuff? That's a lot of people. Are they all people from our church and school? Well, some are, but others are from our school. Interesting. Have you, <clears throat> have you heard the story about how Boar's Head was created? Yeah, but it was a long time ago. Could you tell me the story again? So, a long time ago, a, a boy was walking to school and a bull attacked him. Then the boy fought back and shoved his book down the boar's throat and killed it. Wow, that's very interesting. Did you hear how it came to our school? Yes. 
Mr. and Mrs. Makama were acting cool your college together. And while there, the school did the Bulls Head Festival. Then they start talking about it here and how we should do it at St. John Fraser. Yep, that's right. And 1,500 people come to visit and watch the performance. And one time, they had so many people, they all didn't get to see Sit. That's a lot of people. I can't believe all those people want to see them. That must mean people love the performance. I sure do love the performance. Thank you for your time. Back to you, Caroline and Jacob. Now I know, of course, it's not about a pig. I knew it. That was very interesting, though. Yeah, it was. I'm Caroline. I'm Jacob. And thanks, and thanks for, for watching. watching. Have, Have a great, great night. night.